All right, this diagram down in the bottom down here is also, excuse me, is also in your book. And essentially, it diagrams the steady decline that occurs with learned helplessness. And um, what happens, and like I, I, I described for you with the, um, the dogs, is that as soon as they realize, first, the uncontrollable bad event, uncontrollable, and I'll just put event um, for the sake of fitting it in here. The uncontrollable event occurs, the electricity. And uh, what they uh, conclude is, is I can't get out. So there's a lack of control that exists here. And based on that, then, uh, what we see is this helpless behavior. So even when they are given the opportunity to save themselves, they wouldn't take the opportunity because, in a sense, and we it's not like we're trying to do thinking for a dog, uh, but by their behavior, it would suggest that they just simply didn't think it was worth it because it wouldn't work. That's part of helpless behavior. So uh, another key uh, important concept is something that we refer to as attributional style. Uh, whoops, let me get that fixed. S style. And everybody has one. Uh, we, we all engage in some kind of attributional style. And essentially what it is, is a way of explaining um, uh, positive and negative events in our world. And negative events. So what, that, what does that mean? Well, let's just say, for example, just for an example, um, particularly since I'm your professor and I would say this, let's just say, for example, you get a bad score on a, on a quiz, okay? Um, you get a bad score and your first blush explanation of it will say something about what your attributional style is. Um, for example, you might say, uh, the, the quiz was too hard. And that would be uh, a deflection, if, if you will, uh, on from your own performance onto some external uh, element, the, the quiz itself. Uh, you could also say, uh, I, didn't, I didn't study, and so I got the grade, basically, that I deserved. Um, or you could say a little bit of both. You could say, well, the, the quiz was pretty hard, but I didn't study, and those two things come together, then that, of course, uh, uh, that, of course, is the reason that I didn't perform very well. The, the fourth one is, is another one, which would be, uh, uh, Mitch has it in for me. And again, that's an external, um, that's an external explanation. All of these have something to do with attributional style. For example, um, and that's that's part of each one of these. This is external, so it's uh, uh, outside of me. It's someone else's fault. Uh, this one is internal. This one would be combo, and this one would be external. And our tendency, depending on our attributional style, has everything to do with how we begin to develop our understanding of ourselves. So if good things happen, and I say it's luck, then I won't have much, uh, uh, I won't put much stock in uh, my performance. In other words, it's, it's an external thing. Bad things happen, and it's because I'm bad. Then, uh, 
then it would say that that's naturally going to occur. Unless I can make some dramatic changes internally, it will always turn out this way. And so the other side of the coin is I do good and um, I performed well if I move it from a um, internal state, performed well, and turn it into a performance issue, then I can always get better. And the same thing is true with bad again, is that um, uh, I performed poorly. See, each one of those uh, make an attribution to uh, behavior rather than internal states. And those are important to understand when we're talking about attributional style. Uh, the things that come into this also is uh, excessive optimism, uh, which often leads to uh, other errors because we are excessively optimistic, or excessive uh, pessimism. And both of those have a direct impact on our performance itself. Interestingly enough that when you look at each of these, uh, positive thinking, uh, we're not, when, we, when I say ex excessive optimism, I'm not talking about being positive. I'm talking about a, uh, a, a uh, underrating of my uh, abilities. And so in spite of the fact that I might say that I, I'm not competent, uh, I need to learn more, I cover it up with positive thinking positively, and it can really blind me to the real risks that go on. The same thing is true of pessimism, is that I may have a great deal of, of skill and, and ability, and because I'm pessimistic, um, my tendency is to downplay it, and therefore I won't take any risks. So uh, uh, excessive optimism can be blinding, and excessive uh, pessimism can um, lead me to no risk taking, so therefore then uh, I won't get any greater uh, uh, data to demonstrate that I'm good at something. So we can be blind to our own incompetence, and that puts us even great, more greatly at risk. Increasingly, uh, what has been begun to uh, emerge in psychology is the idea of positive psychology, and it really, in a lot of ways, is looking at how do I do this on a balanced sort of way, uh, rather than focusing on all that I uh, can't do, I look at uh, my strengths and building on my strengths rather than focusing on the things that I can't do. And there's positive psychology, as good as it is, often makes the error the same error that I mentioned above is that um, we need ultimately a balanced approach in having a realistic understanding of my weaknesses, but also a realistic understanding of my strengths. And our tendency is to gravitate to um, my weaknesses rather than my strengths and blending those together for a picture of someone who can have a balanced sense of oneself.